This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello developers, in today's video, we're taking a look at the top five React animation libraries. Now, as you probably know, React is a library for building user interfaces. And for many of us React developers, using these animations on web pages is an important part of our work from animating text or images to complex 3D animations. These animations can help us improve the overall user experience while building our React applications. Now, in this this video, we're going to compare the top five React animation libraries. We're going to evaluate them so that you can choose the right library for your next React project. Let's get into it. I'm over here on codesandbox.io if you'd like to follow along with today's examples. So let's talk about the first one, React Spring. React Spring is a modern animation library that's based on spring physics. It's very flexible. It covers most animations needed for a user interface. And React Spring inherits some properties from React Motion, like ease of use, interpolation, and performance. If you want to see React Spring in action, go ahead and install it using one of the following commands. You can use npm with npm install React Spring, or if you're using Yarn, go ahead and type Yarn add React Spring. Now, I have here this code sample. And taking a look at some of these lines of code, first of all, let's talk about this use Spring and Animated. Both of these are coming from React Spring. Now down here at the use state hook, I'm initializing an object. And now using interpolation, I took in multiple animated values like a range and output to form one result that is scaled to X. Interpolation is a function that allows you to take multiple values and form one result. Interpolation in React Spring can also be used for a series of states like CSS keyframes and colors. Most animations are done by wrapping our animations in an animated div component. React Spring offers a robust platform for animating React apps. Its props and methods are readable and very easy to understand, even for newbies. Let's see how React Spring stacks up against these other animation libraries we're going to talk about. As far as popularity goes, over 22,000 stars on GitHub and 647,000 weekly downloads on NPM. This library is used a lot by startups like Code Sandbox, Hello, Next.js, Aragon, and others. The documentation is very well written and beginner friendly. It also allows you to copy a code snippet from the documentation and test or preview on Code Sandbox. The bundle size minified is just under 27 kilobytes. Now let's talk about number two, Frame or Motion. Framer Motion is a popular React animation library that makes creating animations easy. It has a simplified API that abstracts the complexities behind animations and lets you as a developer create animations with ease. Even better, it has support for server-side rendering, gestures, and CSS variables. So to install it, we're going to use either Yarn or NPM. So you can say NPM install Framer Motion or with Yarn, Yarn add Framer Motion. Once again, we're going to take a look at this code snippet to see what we built here. Now, just like React Spring, or very similar to React Spring, Framer Motion offers built-in components for animations. So this motion.div right here is used to wrap my object for animations. It helps style my components and elements faster and also improves the code readability. One downside to this, though, is that it can be bulky, but overall, Framer Motion is very strong, it's highly customizable, and it's powerful. It's also pretty popular with about 13,000 stars on GitHub and 761,000 weekly downloads on NPM. The documentation, once again, newbie friendly. The bundle size of Framer Motion is just around 91 kilobytes. That is the biggest one on this list today. All right, let's talk about number three, React Transition Group. Sounds pretty academic, but it's not that hard to use. Unlike many other React animation libraries like React Spring, React Transition Group Group has simple components for defining animations. The library does not define styles itself, but instead it manipulates the DOM in useful ways, making the implementation of transitions and animations much 
easier. In other words, the React Transition Group has a straightforward approach to animations and transitions. So to install it using NPM or Yarn, you can install by typing NPM I React Transition Group or Yarn Add React Transition Group. Now, once again, I have my code snippy here, and I want to bring your attention to this built-in component transition. And this is setting the animations and transitions to elements, thereby separating elements from your animations. So very easy to use, very succinct. Popularity around 8.9 thousand stars on GitHub, and get this, about 7.8 million weekly downloads on NPM. The documentation, again, very newbie friendly, clear examples, easily understood with code sandbox examples. And also too, as a bonus, React Transition Group comes with backing for TypeScript out of the box. So for my TypeScript people, this is a great bonus. And the bundle size minified, we're looking at 14.2 kilobytes. So React Transition Group is a good animation library, has a very small bundle size, one of the most popular animation libraries, another one to consider for your next React project. Let's talk about number four, React Motion. This is yet another one that boasts an easier approach to create and implement realistic looking animations. React Motion makes use of physics in order to create an almost natural animation for React elements. So once again, if you'd like to install this on NPM, you are going to type NPM I react motion or on yarn yarn add react motion and bring your attention over to this snippet I have this thing called staggered motion now this is going to add transitions to the components and with react motion you can take advantage of an API that simplifies animation components in react it has over 20,000 stars on GitHub and more than 600,000 downloads on NPM. The documents are interactive and you can copy the source code of a given component from the docs. Bundle size minified, we're looking at 19.8 kilobytes. Overall, React Motion is a pretty solid animation library for your React app, especially with that lifelike animation behavior. Now let's talk about number five, last but not least on this list. React Move is a library for creating beautiful and data-driven animations. It also supports TypeScript out of the box and supports custom tweening functions. Now tweening, if you're not an animation guru, that is short for in-betweening. And it's this process of generating key frames, which are frames between images. React Move also features lifecycle events on its transitions, and you can pass your custom tweens in your animations in React Move. With over 6,000 stars on GitHub and over 115,000 weekly downloads on NPM, React Move is growing in popularity among the dev community. As far as documentation goes, developers, all of these libraries have really good documentation. This is another example of that. React Move provides code snippets and an opportunity to test those snippets on Code Sandbox, much like many of the other libraries shown today. And the minified bundle size, we're looking at 12.7 kilobytes. Regardless of the project, these React animation libraries can help you create user-friendly animations and transitions easily and quickly. These libraries are customizable and have some really great built-in features. Hopefully with this video, you're on your way to choosing the right library for your next React app. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.